What's up, everyone? It's Brendan here again from What Were They Thinking? Here to remind you about the campaign that is still going on. Two pods a day. Every day in the month of January and February, you are introduced to two independent podcasts that you may not have heard of. And even if you have, it's awesome to see some podcasts get some recognition that they might not otherwise receive. Uh, we've all seen the big ones. We've all listened to the big ones. We we all know them. We all know them well. These are podcasts. These are independent podcasts with people who don't have that built-in celebrity appeal. So it takes a lot more work, a lot more hustling. Uh, you know, a lot more hustling to uh, to get their name out there. So this is a great campaign. Put some of these podcasts in the public eye, and uh, keep your eye out. Be, keep your eyes out for uh, for some great ones. They're all great. Check it out. Follow them on Twitter at Two Pods a Day. Facebook, Two Pods a Day. Retweet. Watch. Download. Listen to them all. Two Pods a Day. And uh, we are also part of it. So, you know, check us out. Of course, you're already checked us out because you're listening to this episode. So that doesn't make a lot of sense. But hey, when did any of the movies we cover make a lot of sense? I might as well join the party. See, that doesn't make sense either. Sleep deprived, recording an introduction for the show at about midnight. Okay, enjoy the show. Hey, Nathan, I guess it's my pick this week, huh? It sure is, Brandon. You know, I usually have a good history of, you know, uh, movies that you tend to really enjoy, but I've got a doozy for you this time. Okay. So, it's a dinosaur movie from the 90s. Oh, well, okay, but Jurassic Jurassic Park's a legitimately good movie, Brendan. I, I think I could tell you exactly what they were thinking with that one. I don't think we need to cover Jurassic Park. No, 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 no not Jurassic Park. Um, oh. No, but, but, I mean, get ready. It does have uh, the star of one of the biggest f- film franchises of all time. Oh, well, that's that's promising. Uh, yeah? Anybody else I might know in it? Uh, big star from, uh, you know, Wild Things. Oh, sweet. I'm a huge Kevin Bacon fan. That's really great. Yeah, sure. That's who we can say that it is. Huh? Oh, oh. Uh, oh, oh, and you know, Nathan, your favorite thing. What's that? This is your favorite thing. Um, no CGI. Oh, great, because you know what I say. If there's a real thing to interact with, a guy in a suit or an animatronic, that's that's the way better way to go. Or that That's not the way I would have said it, but, you know, it's a better way to go because, you know, the, the actors are actually interacting with something. So this... Sounds like it's checking off some pretty good uh, good boxes. I, I'm really on board with this. Right, like animatronics, puppets, no CGI, big stars. So, uh, Nathan, uh, it's actually on YouTube in full, and I'm just going to send you the link right now. Okay. Ah, oh, motherfucker! You know when I pick a movie That's when I'm on to pressure now Question always comes back to me What were they thinking now? Welcome, everyone, to another edition of What Were They Thinking? <laughs> I'm Brendan. I'm Nathan. And uh, we've got some guests with us as well. It is a packed uh, house here today. We do. We do have a packed house. Uh, beside me here in the studio, we have Kaylee Stoltz. Welcome. Hello. And via satellite, we have from California, uh, it might be New California, I'm not sure, uh, Stephen Izzy from Everything I Learned from Movies. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. guys. So we're here to talk about a very important film, guys. Yes. Um, Are we? Uh... No. <laughs> I, I thought we were talking about Tammy and the T-Rex. What the hell? <laughs> I am completely unprepared. <laughs> Wait, did you watch Jurassic Park? <laughs> uh, yes, but unrelated. <laughs> Guys, can we talk about Sam Neill in this movie? <laughs> can we talk about how we sh- it should have had Sam Neill in this movie? You know, the talking of velociraptors really threw me off. <laughs> that was... <laughs> um, but before we 
before we start, I think Nathan has a little surprise for you guys. Yes, uh, you know, I've oh. I've uh, listened to Stephen Azzi's show before, and a fantastic little show. I've actually enjoyed their uh, their more recent oh, really? uh, Jean Claude uh, Van January that's been going on. Bloodsport, one of my favorites uh, as a child, and. Loved it. Um, before we start, though, I know you guys usually start yours with a nice little beer review and everything like that, so I figured I'd return in kind, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and and pop a top here. Oh, my top! <laughs> right. And I'm just going to take a sip and describe what I'm drinking here. Please be hmm. monkey fist. Please be monkey fist. Please be monkey fist. Uh, no, it's... it's uh, I'm, I'm sensing... Ta- uh, a hint of uh, desperation uh, mixed <laughs> with uh, hardcore gangsta attitude with just Ooh. a tinge of regret. Colt no, 45. <laughs> Bang on, Steve. Bang on. <laughs> you do know your beer. Yes. Hey. 710 milliliters of Colt 45 will be accompanying yeah. me today. Okay, Woo. guys. You, uh, you didn't even understand. Nathan is method. He's actually drinking that right now. <laughs> I'm oh, gonna. No. I, I took a picture. I'm gonna post it. Uh, we, we, Brendan, we can share it on the website and everything. <laughs> Me having a cold a- forty-five. So I'm just yeah. gonna go ahead and uh, take this picture here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just. This is go- exciting. This is live. <laughs> yeah. Forward this on to our good friend Brendan. Yeah, yeah, that's indeed. me. So Tammy and the T Rex. <laughs> Tammy and the T Rex. Oh God. Now I gotta say, before we actually jump into the movie itself, here, generally on this show, as Nathan knows, and this is people that are, lis- are listening know, um, I like to get some background information on the movie before we get going. <laughs> this one was not easy. What? This one was not easy to get background information on. <laughs> Um, the only real thing I will say before we get started is the director, Stuart Raffle, who is a great name. Mm-hmm. Um, that's how we got of... the money for this movie. <laughs> we just won some sort of raffle. <laughs> he, um, his other directing credits, I wrote down three of them. They are as follows. <laughs> He's right. also directed The New Swiss Family Robinson, <laughs> um, <laughs> Mannequin 2 On the Move, Classic. Yeah. and... Of course, Mac and me. That makes perfect sense. Oh my uh, God. He also did this wonderful movie called Ice Pirates that we had the pleasure yeah. of watching about a year ago. I think I've seen it, that one. It is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, the title says it's all. They're Ice Pirates. Um, the, o- the only other thing I found was an interview from about 2011, I think, with Paul Walker for IGN. And they, they <laughs> basically the guy put a bunch of like crappy... Uh, cheesy movies that he had done back in the day, and he said, "Where's Tammy and the T Rex?" And when the guy when the guy asked him for any more information, Paul Walker could basically only say, uh, "I was probably smoking a lot of pot at the time, but yeah, that shit was cool." <laughs> <laughs> I was I was halfway expecting you to say that the, the interviewer mentioned it and he stormed off, saying this interview was over. Yeah. Yeah. Can, we, can we get back to my gay porn that I did? Because I'd rather talk about that. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Go on. <laughs> no, no, no. He, no, Steve's uh, just no, no, slandering the, good, the, the name of a of a dead man. So, okay. <laughs> I thought you were talking. I thought you were talking about like an un, an unreleased like Fast and Furious sequel or something. <laughs> yeah, with well, no, it was the same title. <laughs> no, yes. that's the spinoff that the Rock and just, uh, Jason Statham are about to do. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, so I guarantee my wife will still buy a ticket. <laughs> Tammy like and the T Rex. <laughs> so, oh, sorry, sorry. I have to mention one more thing about uh, Mr. Raffle. Yes, he is also the writer of Passenger Fifty Seven. Always bet on black. Right, right. <laughs> you know, actually, and you know who the the. <laughs> The co-writer of that movie was the guy who wrote Surf Ninjas. <laughs> yes! Wow. Yes! <laughs> you know what they say, a broken clock finds a truffle once in a while. <laughs> I believe that is the saying, yeah. <laughs> no, honey, it's a watch clock never boils. <laughs> oh, that's it. Yeah. My mistake. <laughs> So I want to go around for a second, just before we start this, and just get an idea. Now, first of all, Nathan, had you ever heard of this movie? I had. 
I think I had vaguely heard of it in passing. Uh, I think someone had told me about it once, and I thought they were joking. <laughs> I didn't think this was a legitimate thing until you sent me the link. And uh, I talked to Gilbert uh, about it, and he was like, good luck with that one, bud. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Kaylee, had you ever heard of this movie before? Um, I actually had. My roommate, um, around the time that Paul Walker died, uh, had gone and sort of watched all of the Paul Walker movies. <laughs> Way <laughs> to <laughs> trip you. About, about it at, at, at the time, but I didn't, uh, I didn't get a lot of information, and I'd seen the trailer for it, but, uh, uh, she was sitting in her room while I was watching... This it, this time and uh, and she was laughing at all the parts where I was just like, oh my god, what the fuck, <laughs> what is, what's happening right now? Because she could just hear me, <laughs> she was just cracking up. You could rename this movie "What the Fuck Is Happening Right Now." Honestly, <laughs> um, and Stephen Izzy, I believe you guys had heard of it before. Yeah, we were researching for a dinosaur movie month and stumbled upon the trailer for this gem. And it went immediately to the top of our list, but uh, <laughs> Dinosaur Month hasn't come around yet, so... <laughs> uh, you know, in watching it, I realized, I think I'd actually seen part of this, what? and I th think, as a kid, I turned it off because I thought it was part of uh, the Weird Science TV show. <laughs> oh, that, that would make sense. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, one of the shows Lee Tegrenson got his start on. So just to bring us into this, just to bring us into this, I want to set the mood because this is the this is the song that opens the film. Um, <laughs> I want to play a little bit of it Jesus. for you guys right now. And, and, Steve, and, and Steve, uh, we, we have updated our facilities. I can actually play this live. So la di da. Yeah. So <laughs> here we go. Here's a little bit of the opening tune. Your T-Rex on the loose I'm coming out to get you I'm gonna cook your goose Everything is different It's a different game Jump into the fire Jump into my brain And that's probably enough of that, but that's... <laughs> I'm guessing the rights uh, to that Was Not Was song was were too expensive. You know what's funny, though? Did Sammy Hagar get his writing credits for that? Because that was <laughs> totally Sammy Hagar-esque. Yes, that was Hagarific. What's funny is that I'm playing that, like, I basically had to get uh, use the YouTube clip of the full movie, by the way. And because I looked up that song, it is nowhere. You can't even <laughs> find history of it being recorded. <laughs> Almost as if someone was trying to bury it. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> but it's so good, though. So first off, right off the bat, did you, any of you did any of you find it was weird that we started with a shot from like midway through the movie? That was odd. Yeah. <laughs> like just Tammy. then riding across on the T Rex and Tammy and the T Rex. That, <laughs> yeah, that was uh... this fall on you family. Give everybody, what they came for, like otherwise they're gonna leave. <laughs> 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 you gotta open. You gotta open with the money shot. <laughs> oh look, yeah. they're in the distance. That I think that is the woman named Tammy in a T Rex. That is the absolute opposite rule of pornography. You don't open with the money <laughs> shot. <laughs> well, and well, then you throw in the story, <laughs> and that's when the money rolls in. It's a, it's a Tarantino esque porn. <laughs> Porn I've I just seen. having trouble finding her motivations for this. <laughs> the money shot, and then you order the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> the porn I've seen, yeah, the sex is first, and then the, the last 45 minutes is just story. It's all character development. <laughs> yeah. well, I know I watch porn to to find out what toppings they had on their pizza. Like, that's the part that I'm interested in. <laughs> Usually oh, it's sausage. Rewind that. <laughs> rewind that. Was that a pepperoni? <laughs> pineapple on their pepperoni yeah Ugh. yeah fantastic yeah. Know, that kind of a horn <laughs> hey you know you have an open mind different strokes for different folks <laughs> but i think this is an important debate guys i think this is a very important debate to settle paul walker or denise richards who has the most dead eyes oh god paul walker by paul far walker. he i can't believe yeah. he got work after this but i understand he was probably 16 years old like he he looks legitimately he like... You can't movie. understand like how he yeah. got work after this? Did you see him in yeah. that half shirt? My yeah. goodness. Well, I mean, yeah, he, I mean, he's a good-looking kid, but 
Wow, <laughs> don't give him any more lines. <laughs> Not only was it a half shirt, it was a half sweater. <laughs> yeah, well. What was, gonna, what can I say? Last dance was big 10 years earlier. <laughs> Isn't the point of a sweater to keep you warm? Not in California. It's, it's true. <laughs> I'm warm in my sweater. <laughs> so, do you guys do you guys see a lot of half sweaters out there in California? Well, you know, we do. We get a lot of like, oh man, I'm cold. I think I'm gonna put socks on with my flip flops. Oh my! God. <laughs> oh, funny story. When I was in uh, university, uh, there was an exchange student uh, from California, and he was actually from like the L.A. area. Uh, and I was going to university in Quebec, Canada, probably the second hardest winters in the country, second only to the prairies. And, um, he called his folks and his, he said it was so cold and his mom was like, oh yeah, I know your father had to, had to, uh, put a sweater on the other day. And he was like, mom, you have no idea. <laughs> so he had, at that point had had two feet of snow and it was uh, at least minus 10 degrees Celsius. And he was still wearing shorts oh. and flip-flops, right? Well, but I just, mean... Just, like, with a park over it? <laughs> I can't... See, pretty much. But I can't say anything. I'm wearing shorts today. And it's it's <laughs> January in New Brunswick, so... Yeah, no, welcome to Californians. Like, you can pry our flip-flops off our feet with, you know... Cold, dead hands. You pry them from our cold, dead hands. Right, like, exactly. <laughs> I was going to say, since we're still in, like, the first full minute of this movie... <laughs> yes. Um, I wanted to point out, I saw one of the executive producers was Jolene Deathrage, and I was instantly in. Instantly. <laughs> I'm sure it's not pronounced that way, but if my name was that, I would be pronouncing it that way. <laughs> right? Deathrage! Hello, my name is Jolene Deathrage. It's spelled Deathrage. Deathrage? It's Deathrage. Deathrage. Yeah. Look, you can uh, church it up all you want. Office. It's death rage. That's probably what happened, actually. Well, I mean, with, with a name like that, you can only do one of two things. You can either produce movies or, you know, start up a death metal band. I don't know. I feel like you could also open, like, a coffee shop, like Death Rage Coffee. <laughs> 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 and then you can have a whole movie where people are just coming in and be like, yo, is this the Death Rage coffee place? They're like, it's actually, it's it's Death Raji, okay? Like, come on. <laughs> it's like that whole Frankenstein Frankenstein joke. <laughs> it's Frankenstein. Frankenstein. <laughs> so Tammy and the T-Rex. <laughs> Not trying to make What's us talk movie? about this movie. Um, I, I, I am excited about this movie. So... Right off the bat, uh, that like like I was playing that song earlier. That plays over Denise Richards uh, doing cheerleading slash gymnastics slash whatever she's doing, and uh, slash yoga. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Paul Walker basically shows up with his half sweater, and mm -hmm. he says, uh, he, "You know, they're a thing, but she's kind of weary of, of it because uh, there's some bullies, or as uh, as Nathan and I referred to bullies in another episode, real psychos, because they are real psychos. <laughs> they're straight up yeah. psychopaths. Are they? No. <laughs> Before we get too much further into this, I had to ask: Are they in high school or are they like freshmen in college? college. They're definitely high school. No, no, no. They're they have to be college because there's like the huge big party on like campus. And they are yeah, drinking. With alcohol and like, yeah. And the police don't break it up because of the alcohol. The police break it up because of the noise complaints. Yeah. And I and I think Denise Richards is 29 years old. <laughs> <laughs> what? How old is Tammy I mean... <laughs> Oh, Tammy. I, I'm oh, pretty sure they're both only about 20 years old, the actors. The teacher comes out and is like, oh, you're banned from this school or something <laughs> yeah like, like before the fight starts. Uh, you're right because he yeah. says that they have he has like a restraining order against him yeah yeah, the, the amount of, oh, yeah that's right the <laughs> amount of things that the uh antagonist in this movie or at least the the boyfriend ex-boyfriend rather antagonist in this movie could have been jailed for before we got to the you know attempted <laughs> murder I, 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 I attempted I, about it well <laughs> It, it was a saw-like scenario. It was the, you have two choices a, to make. A, de a death was suspect. committed. A, a death. A death happened uh, in the process of another crime. So yes, they would be charged with murder. Right? We covered that on other podcasts and stuff before too. So yeah, so they're weary about the bullies. Um, he gives her a flower. <laughs> nom 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 nom. Uh, yeah, she tells him, "No, I can't take that because I guess the flower will set him off or something." And so he eats it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was the first one. Was like, well, what? 
He's, oh, he's in special ed classes. <laughs> Actually, oh. he's got his football he's gear on. He's carb loading, bro. Carb loading. <laughs> Just like I'm doing today with my Colt 45. <laughs> Paul Walker also has this thing too where He's definitely like a new he's definitely brand new at this point like just just barely started acting. He's got this like uh green like uh inexperienced actors thing where if he's in the scene and no one's talking to him, he just shuts off. Uh-huh. <laughs> like he just goes completely blank. I, I wonder if that's how he is in real life like when Someone's talking to Vin well, Diesel, he and, he, and he's in the show. Oh, oh, gosh. Oh, 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 not okay. I mean, in interviews for Fast and Furious Evil. So the um, before the bullies show up, though, we meet Byron. Yes. I want to talk about Byron. You mean Hollywood? Oh, yes. He was. And it's funny, because that you said that he wrote the mannequin, yeah. too. It's, it's the it's, same character. Yeah, it's 100% the same character. Stuart Raffle just likes token, gay, black, African stereotypes. Don't forget Sassy. He was Sassy. Oh. He, he's asking the hard questions and trying to open doors for the uh, the gay African-American community who want to embrace their African heritage. Come I, on. I will say this <laughs> about the character, um, because later on we meet his dad, who, spoiler alert, is the sheriff but his dad isn't like constantly trying to change him or saying he's ashamed of him or anything like that he actually just treats him like his son which is he just ignores him <laughs> as most dads are wont to do <laughs> but he does have one of the most on the nose names of the whole movie his name is sheriff black yes. that was <laughs> it uh, and so it was Byron Black, and we were like, I wonder what the sheriff's first name in, is. Is it Token? Uh, <laughs> and, and that's how they came up with the character for South Park. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's his name as well. Huge but fans of Tammy and the T-Rex. The bullies show up. Mm-hmm. Uh, we meet a Billy, what, Billy Bad. Again. Yes. Billy Bad. Again. So creative. So creative. <laughs> On the nose. It's, it should be in an Expendables movie. It's so creative. I thought his first name was Valaine. <laughs> <laughs> Valaine bad. <laughs> but, um, this is one of the most unique uh, fighting styles I've seen. Because it turns out, it starts out like a WWE uh, wrestling match. and then it Even becomes... with the elbow drop, brother. Yeah. <laughs> and then it turns into a dick grabbing fight. Oh, yes. Oh, it's yeah. a, it's a ball grabbing good time. They literally just hold on to each other's penises until one of them lets go. It's called a Rochambeau. <laughs> that's, a, that's a kick in the nuts, exactly. The testicular standoff, I it's believe, it's referred to as. going to grab him in the testicles, brother. Yeah, the cops you know, said, I'm going to squeeze. I just have to say uh, that half shirt makes the whole thing super, super straight, too. Yeah, yeah it's 100%. I mean, don't you, isn't that how you guys... Fought in school, really you put on a. T- oh, and then also the whole time Byron's like making comments about how. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, and like like no no go for the base. Doesn't he? Doesn't he look over when they're grabbing each other and he's like, yeah, that's a good move. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's you know it, again, it's it's the uh, it's the it's the pro wrestling booking attitude of of a lot of stuff that goes on in this movie is you got to get your shit in. Everyone's got to get their moves in. Everyone's got to get that one liner in. And then we come to find out the whole time that. Uh, Paul Walker is uh, is in absolute agony. He's wearing a cup, so yeah. proof that he can. Yeah, act. yeah. And, and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and also, Billy really Bad didn't go like, "Oh, this is a little firmer than I'm used to with my own." <laughs> <laughs> hey, no wonder Billy she wants to go out with him. <laughs> Billy Bad wouldn't have picked that out loud though, because he's 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 not gay, you guys. He's not gay. Oh, of course not. No, no. I mean, don't don't let his outfit fool you. And I gotta ask <laughs> with. He clearly has like some floozy hanger ons. Why is he so obsessed with uh, with Tammy when he's got like two or three girls in his entourage who are just like, "Yeah, Billy, you're the best." Well, oh, those uh, bitches are psychos too. They, they're the biggest psychos in the movie. But uh, the thing they don't really touch on this movie, Tammy gives amazing head. Well, I mean Charlie Sheen worthy. <laughs> Wait, enough to make a brain that? spark. That's for sure. Oh, <laughs> stay tuned. Spoiler alert. <laughs> um, 
So, okay, so after this fight, you know, like you said, Paul Walker's like, haha, I'm wearing a cup, you actually didn't hurt me. Billy yeah. Bad gets uh, taken taken off school grounds by the cops who uh, just happened to show up very quickly, and by so, the way. And this is, the, this is one of the first points where he could be legitimately jailed for at least 72 hours because he <laughs> is uttering threats, saying several times that he's going to legitimately kill Paul Walker's character, and uh, also he's breached a restraining order. Right. I also what? want to point out, uh, what's wrong with Billy that he doesn't realize he's grabbed a cup and not nuts? Yeah, that's <laughs> like, that, that, that would be very quick, like, wait a minute. <laughs> I have one or of these. Just... I know what it's supposed to feel like. Yeah. <laughs> this so cup is amazing. <laughs> these aren't balls at all. And also, Paul Walker would have been an absolute advantage in that fight because he's wearing football pads. So here's where, here's where the movie really starts to go into crazy town because we meet Terry Kaiser's character. Can we AKA. all just agree that this movie began in crazy town and went nowhere else because this movie was crazy town from beginning to end. This movie is the tour of crazy town. Yes. And Terry Kaiser is, is uh, he's going to be our tour guide, but, he, but here's the thing. The movie is crazy from the beginning, yes. But if you did not know what this movie was, uh, forget about the opening shot where she's on the T-Rex, but if you didn't yeah. know what this movie was, um, and you didn't know the title, you would not... Until the part where you meet Terry Kaiser, you'd be like, oh, this is just a crazy, weird teen movie. But at this point, we learn that Terry Kaiser is a mad scientist who wants to put a human brain in a mechanical dinosaur. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. Because, um, also, I was, you, I'm not on board with him not having a mustache. I'm used to Bernie. Yeah. Right? Right. But now, hold on a second, because he says he wants to achieve immortality. Mm -hmm. How could, what, the brain is eventually going to die, though. It will deteriorate, yes, is, is he carbon doesn't realize based. But what cells. about that green goo that floats in? Doesn't that preserve the brain? Yeah, that's brain pres preservation fluid, duh. <laughs> You know, what there's a fluid in that bat. <laughs> can Science, you, guys. if Just, someone can tell me his motivation, I would like to know. So that he can put his brain into a dinosaur, but he has to test it out first. I don't understand. I'm going to go ahead and just say hubris. Yeah. His ego. Well, that's, uh, yeah. that, that's probably a big he part of it. Do it. I don't understand why he started with the T Rex, though. Well, bigger goes what was available. Maybe it was leftover from when they, you know, made I, dress work. From, from, when he worked at, <laughs> from when he worked at Toys R Us. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know I, I'm almost absolutely certain it's so he can be the first person in history to say, "You're done." I'm a motherfucking <laughs> <laughs> well played, sir. Well played. <laughs> the only reason why I ask is because later on they talk about their plan is to uh, to do the same thing with robotic cats and dogs. I didn't even catch that. Yes, there's there, there, because the idea is that they're going to do this so that people can transplant uh, the, I guess, the, the, the brain of their dearly departed rover into a robotic dog that looks and feels like a real dog so that they'll always have their, their pet dog with them. Did that, you watch the director's cut? No, that it is, that it's, it is it's, it's, it's a part of their plan because once they're like, they figure out that it works... That's one of the things that they want to do. And it's like, it would really seem that it would be smarter for you to start with that, considering that's one of your end goals. But he didn't <laughs> have the cat or dog uh, robot uh, prototype yet. Yeah, because it took a lot less time to build a dinosaur one. That was fresh off the lot at Universal. That And also that, that dinosaur <laughs> skipped arm day. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, uh, we'll talk about the arms. Yeah. But I do feel like they missed a lot of opportunities with all of the like short arms T Rex jokes. Like there were none of those in this, right? And there's even parts where it's like, oh. wait a second, that arm is not that long. It is clearly yeah. a human arm in a glove yes. coming in from a totally different angle <laughs> than as if it were attached to the T Rex. Oh. So can we skip to the part where he grabs Tammy in the upstairs bedroom, or are we waiting? <laughs> oh, I uh, have one more thing to say about the first scene with the, you know, evil doctor. Um, it, I felt like I was just watching a different movie all of a sudden. Yeah. There's no, like, preamble. Yeah, they just <laughs> jumped into that, didn't happened. they? 
<laughs> and then went straight back to whatever else was happening before. <laughs> like, who changed the channel to Carnivore? Like, is this supposed to be in this movie? Or... <laughs> I, I'll tell you, I felt like changing the the, the channel to Carnosaur because this is, I actually wanted to watch that after I watched this movie. Um, okay, this is my favorite reveal yeah. in the whole movie. So they cut to, uh, so after we get this whole thing where, you know, he's testing out the dinosaur, he's like biting logs and like using its arms and feet and stuff. Um, we cut back to Paul Walker, who's all mopey, laying in bed, and there's like a really like, uh, like a girly, like depressing song playing, and yeah. then we find out that and it's him playing the song in his room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's <was> pretty good. <laughs> to Lisa Lame in Nine Stories. <laughs> <laughs> that goes out to all you Lisa Loeb fans out there. That's right, I made that reference. All seven of you. <laughs> Although, actually, I, I should have tried to search. I, I searched a little harder, and I found a way I could make some Melissa Etheridge uh, uh, references as well, because I want to come over. And then come to oh, my window. window. <laughs> thanks, Steve. Good. Thanks for the backup, bud. You got me back. All right. I like you, Steve. You're a good guy. <laughs> so Paul Walker grabs a bunch of clothes and heads over to Denise Richards' house. Why would you grab more clothes to go to your That's girlfriend's I, house? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. I would put on easier, accessible clothes, actually. <laughs> And He's like, well, yeah, I guess man. I'm gonna go have sex. I better put my clothes on. <laughs> better layer up. Tear away sweats. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna grab a couple sweaters. <laughs> Only half sweaters, though. Only half sweaters. <laughs> Wait, is this my is this my Velcro gigolo outfit? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, he doesn't wear ten thousand cloaks. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have a note here that just says Paul Walker and Denise Richards are no Chevy Chase because they're trying to do physical humor at one point. Oh, it's the worst, it's isn't it? So bad. Forced. Oh, just like Denise Richards kind of barely grazes the table and it just goes, everything goes flying. And she's like, oh, we're crazy. Also, her parents call upstairs, like <laughs> literally call upstairs oh, on yeah. the phone to make sure she's okay. I just dropped my her dictionary. Her parents are the worst. <laughs> her parents are the worst parents in the history of parents. Yes. Like, worse than Laurie on The Walking Dead. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> also, another weird, another weird transition here, guys. Um, when Paul, uh, Paul Walker and Denise Richards are, like, getting down, um, <laughs> they cut to the dad saying, ooh, that's hot. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that was like on purpose, supposed to be funny, but it's just really ooh. <laughs> I just <laughs> said ooh. I, I think the thing that bothered me most about the uh, the calling upstairs to check on them was that I don't know if it's because I gr I, I grew up in a in a different uh, income bracket, but um, the, the it wouldn't have been a telephone call upstairs. It would have been knock it off up there. I'll go up there and kick your ass. Make sure your Jimmy hat's on. Well, see, well, you're already a different income bracket than us because you had an upstairs. So. <laughs> All right, sweet. I'm the rich this, kid on this thing. This would be um, <laughs> this would be the right situation for uh, James Gandolfini's character from Surviving Christmas. Hey, hey, exactly. Hey. Knock it off up there. Get and off your computer. No one's gonna pay him for what he's doing up there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yes izzy i want to i want to just go back to your comment about them being the worst parents because they see all these bullies and they just basically let them in yeah yeah yes yeah. No, like, and, uh, while one of them actually screams it's a gangbang <laughs> the mom does the mom goes it's a gangbang <laughs> they don't even call the police i see? think she's on the phone with the police at the end when they're running out oh, okay at the I, end, I, like, I feel would have been like going after people like just hitting yeah. them with anything she could grab she'd be like i'm gonna beat you with a cat <laughs> i i feel that the people who are writing this uh, we're trying to say that uh, that they were gang bangers, but I don't think that they got the spirit of the word because they definitely got that mixed up if they said it's a gang bang. Also, now we're up to about six or seven more crimes because we got a home invasion, stalking, mm -hmm. kidnapping, trespassing, false imprisonment. I, 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 really? Honest to God, yeah. the police in this town. Yes. They should That's have brought the back the death penalty just for this case. You know, it's a, it's kind of a hard target situation where the police may be on strike in this town. Yeah, uh, you know. Except for uh, Byron's dad and the the, the two, two 
The, uh, I, the guess, they're, they're the only ones I've seen. I thought they couldn't the two, strike because they're essential services. The two perverted homophobic cops. Uh, the cops, the two cops are really, yeah, they're quite homophobic near the beginning, but near the end they sort of seem to be turned or have a change of heart or something. It's probably it's the only because character they really, development that happens. They realize their love for each other. It really is a pro- <laughs> progressive movie. Uh, I've been calling you my partner for many years. <laughs> no, I want to call you my partner in life. Until now. Until now. <laughs> oh my god, what, what were their names too? It was like Norville and Neville or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Norville and Neville, it was meant to be. Also, here's, yeah. the, here, here's the thing. When, we, get, when you, uh, we actually find out that Byron knows them by first name. And it, he clearly addresses them in a familiar way. For them to be as dickish as they are about him being gay is unacceptable. Unacceptable. Right. Well, because, guys, I just want to say that um, Norville and Neville, I'm pretty sure if you listen closely, I'm pretty sure I heard uh, this in the background. (laughs) So the the real psychos. Um, yeah. yes. first, first of all, I have a note that says peekaboo, Paul, because at one point Billy looks out the window and Paul Walker just goes, hi! <laughs> <laughs> like around the corner. <laughs> hey, everybody! <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they, they catch him. They beat him in the back with a baseball bat. Yes. <laughs> and then and put him in the bit. trunk. Yes. Yeah. They also, they went really, really, really over the top, they did not have to do that. <laughs> like <laughs> on the on the bullies or like just the I don't know. It was just like they're very unwell people, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, just they just went way too far. Yeah, like they're not they're they're beyond the point of like high school bullies. Yeah. Like they're they're thugs. They're criminals. <laughs> they're real psychos. Exactly. They're gonna liquid liqu- uh, liquefy their body <laughs> this body and put it in the uh, East drive River. them yeah all the way to New York and dump them in the East River. <laughs> Right. Hashtag garbage bill kids. Yeah. Yeah, these are the kind of bullies where even John Waters is like, whoa, this is a little over the top. <laughs> <laughs> Come on guys, reel it back in. <laughs> so these these real psychos um take Paul Walker in the trunk to mm. the zoo slash wildlife uh it's a safari park. park. It's a safari yeah. park. Okay, because there's every animal is just in the same area. Yep. <laughs> With no enclosures yeah. whatsoever. No, just the gate. Yep. <laughs> at the, at the yeah. front, and that's it. Which is a very, like, flimsy, flimsy gate. So I'm really yeah. worried about this community and, and actually how how many wild animal attacks they have per year. Oh, well, you don't <laughs> have to worry because the, uh, the park rangers, the folks who are in charge of the security there, don't use tranquilizers to, uh, to subdue their shotguns. animals. Just shotguns. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> because Paul Walker gets attacked by a lion and killed, um, and then they shoot no. him. So and a essence, panther, and he only a gets panther. Maimed. He only gets maimed. Right, but Then sorry. you can't see it on his face later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in essence, this lion it was Harambe before Harambe. I'm just Except saying. For Except for Harambe. <laughs> you know, Brennan, in order to be topical, you the topic has to be at hand. It's It's been a couple of years, bud. You know what? Never Never forget. <laughs> Never forget. <laughs> The movies we talk about, you're worried about being topical? Well, I, I <laughs> Montrose might take issue with it. He might say never forget, but uh, he's not here right now, so. Yeah, oh, was he put down too? No. <laughs> too soon. <laughs> it's a car accident. Is that how Montrose Monkington Jr.? <laughs> yeah, anyway. Well, it would be Jr. because he's the third, right? So <laughs> Exactly. He'd exactly. be the eighth. I, Come on, Steve. I lost, your I lost my father the same way. <laughs> Montrose, is that you? <laughs> I don't yeah. find this funny at all. <laughs> Hello, this is the ghost of Montrose Monkington Jr. <laughs> Not Alan Rickman at all. <laughs> oh, but this is for another episode. But <laughs> nah. to bring it all back home, I'm pretty sure they would use tranquilizers. Paul Walker. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they'd use. <laughs> They'd use tranquilizers instead of shotguns. When they take Paul Walker to the hospital, and yeah. uh, Tammy... Linda Vista Hospital. Right. For, Linda Vista Hospital. on Ghost Adventures. Oh, yeah, okay. there's an episode of Ghost Adventures where they tour that abandoned haunted hospital. 
Okay, I'll have to check that out. Season 3, episode 6. You're welcome. (laughs) When Tammy and Byron show up, what was with the dude at the desk? Oh, yeah, what was that? Oh, Jesus. He just kind of shambled up, looked like he was going to freak out. They cut over to the the desk nurse, and they cut back, and he's gone. (laughs) Because it's an abandoned haunted house? No, it's a ghost. like... Was he just, like, dying and then collapsed? He's dead. It was a ghost. <laughs> this is an abandoned hospital. Every time we come to a question we don't understand, Izzy's just like, it was a ghost. Is, this, micro- is this microphone on? <laughs> Did you not hear us? <laughs> oh. But, yeah, what, also, what the hell is Byron wearing? That's a question uh, that could be asked every scene he's in. He has a different costume in every scene. <laughs> Yeah, he's representing his heritage. Don't judge. I will, I'm gonna judge. I'm gonna judge that hood. You know what? Uh, yeah, I thought Canadians are supposed to be the least judgmental ones here. <laughs> hey, I'm least too. doesn't mean none. Okay, just gonna put that out there. I mean, Denise Richards is pretty broken up about over Paul Walker being in the hospital, but she gets over it pretty quickly. Oh, um, yeah. When her and Byron actually dating yet? Because she's still trying to get over her ex boyfriend, who's a psycho murderer. Yeah. She she kicks Billy bad in like the weakest possible way, yeah. and then they kind of they kind of have like a cat scratch off. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. and he, Byron even says to Weasel, oh, "Scratch your eyes out." <laughs> right. <laughs> and then they look at each other and laugh. Meanwhile, in the background, Paul Walker is on his deathbed. Yeah, right. <laughs> Showing no signs seems... of a lion attack. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Well, because you don't want to mess yeah, up his like face. black guy. And that's yeah. it. There's actually a couple of notes here that I have about Terry Kaiser, because he shows up here at this point. And one, he's smoking in the hospital. Perfectly yeah, yeah. acceptable. Not. Historical smoking. Right. <laughs> Um, there was a porno joke. Uh, a porno joke slash also a gay joke. Uh-huh. And because he says, I've seen her in movies, and he's like, trust me, you didn't watch those. I don't yeah. see, I didn't catch, I didn't take it to the emphasis was that you didn't see that movie. It was like, you didn't see that movie. As in your underage children or something. Yeah, right. it's like, you didn't yeah. see the movie she stars in. And then we oh, get the... Like, you didn't watch that porn because you are a homosexual. That's how I took it. <laughs> and then we get the... It was more like... <laughs> yeah. Live! Live! Well, that's that's all. Uh, that's, that's about all I can do. Yeah. I mean, really. That is... like, yeah, that's how being a doctor works. <laughs> yeah, right. I tried, you know. Hey. Well, that is my one... Also, like one genuine laugh in this movie. I will admit. admit. <laughs> no, like Terry Kaiser telling him to live, and then saying, "Well, that's it." It that, was very like oh, young Frankenstein. Actually, that gave me that actually yeah. gave me a legitimate laugh. But my second legitimate laugh in this movie came right after this, when I could see the boom mic in the shot. <laughs> and I don't mean just the, the, the little, just the top part of, of the boom. Like, you could see the arm and the full boom mic in the shot when they were doing this. Um, one of two times, by the way. <laughs> Ooh, I, I also want to mention, I have a note written down uh, concerning uh, Dr. Valkenstein's nurse. Um, possibly the fakest breast ever put on film. <laughs> Because they, it looks like she's smuggling uh, WNBA basketballs around her belly button under her outfit. Uh, good, good job at getting the that? full name on that one, Steve. Because I would have just kept calling him Terry Kaiser. Yes. <laughs> I was just calling him <laughs> Bernie. <Yeah. laughs> Doctor Bernie. Doctor Bernie. Um. So yeah, he basically pretends that he can't revive Paul Walker. They take they take him out of the hospital. Uh, for an they, awesome, they steal him out of the hospital. Yeah, for an awesome Wizard of Oz joke. Oh, hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and you were Shut there? Up, and you were there? And you were... Th- Speaking of yeah. topical... Because <laughs> Paul Walker wakes up and he suddenly feels great! Right. <laughs> no, I wasn't maimed by a lion and panther at all! Yeah. yeah, and here he just... You get to see his entire body, basically, and you're like, oh, well, that's a perfect human specimen. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing has happened to him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, if there's anything we've learned from this movie, it's that nope. Paul Walker can take a bunch of pussy attacks. <laughs> it's I like how you it's in certainly the not that Paul Walker is indestructible. I like how you worked in the name of your podcast there. I enjoyed that. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> 
Um, I trust yeah. me, there's a lot of things that I learned from this movie. One is to try to let Brendan not pick the movies as much as possible. <laughs> you know, some lessons are learned harder than others. <laughs> yeah. yeah, whatever. This movie's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. Uh, I did not have a bad time, so at least it's got that. It entertained me, that's for sure. We are literally minute, like minute, almost 50, well, and we haven't even gotten to the T-House. <laughs> Where Paul Walker isn't actually in the rest of the movie. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so we get, very quickly, he goes back, they take him to the warehouse, they do the, the, I guess, if this is on your show, Steve, I think this would run away with the Fuck Science Award. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but they they basically put his brain in brain goo, uh, transfer it to the mechanical dinosaur, and poof, Paul Walker is now a dinosaur. An animatronic dinosaur. <laughs> and then we get... He's a brain in a punch bowl in a dinosaur. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, we also get the appear- a very early appearance for a young actor yeah. uh, as the That's pizza delivery good. boy. Yeah, good old Pedro. Yes. Yeah, I, I did not. I did not notice that. Credit. So good. The the for the- did you notice the name of the uh, pizza place? No. no. It was Bong of Sicily Pizza. <laughs> not even joking. I had to like pause it and rewind it. <laughs> he did. Bong right. of Sicily Pizza. I'm telling you, hey, it just it it was just legalized out there. You guys could start a business, make it <laughs> hand true. over fist. You know Tell what? You wouldn't order pizza from Bong of Sicily. Exactly. <laughs> and then once July rolls around here in Canada, we'll franchise. We'll take the franchise rights here in Canada, and Brendan and I will make them in. I'm, and then we can go. be Bong of Sicily International. Exactly. And that's right. And that's in. when the money rolls in. Exactly. You heard it here first. Oh wait, quickly. Copyright. TM. All rights reserved. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> circle R. Circle C. So I mean, um, you know, unlike movies like uh, like Spider Man, I know you probably never thought you'd hear Spider Man mentioned on Tammy and the T-Rex episode, but unlike movies like Spider-Man and like, you know, uh, other superhero origin movies, you don't get a lot of uh, Paul Walker trying to figure out his new surroundings. He just kind of knows how to be a T-Rex. <laughs> right? yeah. Well, <laughs> once he pulls out that mirror and sees that, in fact, he is a T-Rex. Which he just grabs with his long arms. His super <laughs> yeah. long arms. Super long arms. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and put this out there. I think he might not be a T-Rex. I think he might be an Allosaurus. Actually, I'm going to throw this out there. Mm -hmm. He may be a robot dinosaur with extending arms like Inspector Gadget. Oh, (laughs) Bender-style arms. Okay. (laughs) You're welcome, everyone. Go, go, Gadget arms. Tammy and the Allosaurus didn't have the same ring to it. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Or Tammy and the animatronic robot with extendable arms. not, not Not as pithy. You know what, though? I would have watched the shit out of that movie. Ooh. Allie and the Allosaurus. Allie and the Allosaurus! Oh, my goodness. That, yeah. that, actually, would have, that actually is kind of snappy. <laughs> i got to give you that one. Starring so, Nev Campbell and Vin Diesel. Yeah! <laughs> Paul Walker goes from uh, <laughs> a dopey teenager to vicious killer pretty quickly here. Well, he does so, shred that security guard, doesn't he? Yeah, he really doesn't even have any qualms about killing whatsoever. No, he like steps, he flattens him like a pancake. Oh, or, oh or like, you know, a, a sheet or a rug because they drag him in the, the warehouse like that later. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you guys, he was very up. flat. <laughs> you, you guys all know why he goes immediately on a killing spree. Because now he's just a brain. He doesn't have any heart. Robo rage. <laughs> <laughs> So he's like, oh, another Wizard of Oz reference. He's like the Tin Man. Yeah, he's got to find his heart. It's oh, in Tammy, apparently. Oh, shit. This movie's getting deeper. Speaking <laughs> of Tammy, he wants to give her a call to let her know, and he interrupts some <laughs> poor lady who's talking to her bookie. Exactly. <laughs> Just trying to get in on the race. By the way, this whole scene right here reminded me so much of uh, the uh, the shadow puppet scene in um, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like um, it when he called her. He's like, bruh, bruh, bruh. also, I think they missed the boat by not having him talk. What you're saying is we're missing on the voice acting of Paul Walker in this movie yes, as well. Well, I we am. see. Well, we get some at the end. Spoiler alert. <laughs> but it, 
now that you mention it, yeah, it would have actually made it would have made sense because uh, he gets that ability at the end of the at at the end. So why wouldn't he have that ability while he's the dinosaur? If we, he could talk as a dinosaur, we miss out on him being friends with uh, his token friend, and we miss out on the dinosaur charades later. Where else are we going to put the rose eating in? Um, 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 um. <laughs> Otherwise, that scene is stupid. <laughs> They should have just had that scene anyway. Yeah, because otherwise, only then, only then it would have been a stupid scene. Yeah, only then. <laughs> right. So then yeah, we, right we, now it's poignant and and, uh, and romantic and, and endearing. Indeed. Yeah, those are the words I was looking for. So we're going we're gonna to cut... Flash cut to the party where nobody is dancing in tempo. No. Considering that we've already made the Garbage Pail reference... I feel this is another situation where that comes up because we had a situation like that in that movie where everyone was dancing, but the the music was not on tempo with how they were dancing. And um, maybe it's my OCD. I don't know, but it really bothered me. <laughs> it's actually a really common thing in movies because they don't get the rights for the specific song they're going to use until like later, so they don't know what song they're going to be using. Yep. And either it's just like people, people dancing in the silence when they're actually filming it, or they have a different song playing. Yeah, I, I actually I think that's exactly what uh, we had talked about uh, on the Garbage Pail Kids episode because yeah. they they were dancing like really super fast, and uh, it ended up being like Big Big Man by uh, Pursuit of Happiness that played, and it was <laughs> off tempo in the worst way. <laughs> but I want to tell you something, guys. I want you all not to worry, because Caveman Ken's going to take care of you. His delivery is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Caveman Ken's going to take care of you. Well, you <laughs> gave it way more than he did. <laughs> I know, I turned him into Duff Man, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Booyah! Ken, it's coming for you. <laughs> I want to yeah. know what contest <laughs> did the... He's reading it off a page. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what contest the biker guy won. Oh, the, the big biker guy, yeah, to dance with that girl to ha- like make out with her pretty much. Well, dance with her yeah. again, and it's like it's like man, he had to win a contest or some, or he had to know somebody. There's no yeah. way that somebody showed Rector's up a, nephew. that possibly, and they were like, oh, he's the guy who owned the police car. Oh, so he had the police car, they put him in the movie. That makes sense. <laughs> That doesn't he make sense. the animatronic dinosaur. Because <laughs> there, there's no way that guy showed up, and they were like, yes, that guy. That guy. That guy. I mean, he's um, second behind Paul Walker, so I guess he can't be the lead. <laughs> the, um, the, this scene actually has my favorite line out of the whole movie, and it's not even it, it's not even that crazy, but it's just it just made me laugh for some reason when Denise Richards gets mad because Billy Bad approaches her and she says uh, uh, she says I don't want to I don't want to see you for the rest of my life ever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was pretty bad. There was she's... also the person that said. Maybe it's a dinosaur when it starts rumbling. Well, like, bitch, you drunk. <laughs> when she says that, that I don't want to see you ever in my life again, ever, she storms off, pause, turn, look, storm off some more. That's right. right. I want to make sure he sees me storming off. Milesies <laughs> this time. Um. I was expecting her to say, stop looking at my ass, and then continue walking. <laughs> Again, better better writing than anything in this movie. Yeah, that's what we're good for. But by the way, that he actually seems to listen to. He's been stalking her and attempting to kidnap her for years now, it seems like. Her just saying, like, I think you're a piece of garbage because you killed my boyfriend, never look at me again. It's with the, the part where he's like, oh, Shit, I think she means it. <laughs> get my life together. I really need to well, reflect on my life choices. Maybe I went too far. <laughs> <laughs> well, and didn't it give off the tone of a scene in like a romantic comedy where they have like their first breakup? Oh yeah, yeah, where there's the misunderstanding because like he trips on the dog leash and yeah. she thinks he's like trying to murder her dog, and it's like no, no, no. <laughs> Wait, are we talking about Mikey? Yeah, in the wild animal park. What's the big deal? Yeah, it's not like I'm the one who killed him. It's the lion. And they it, shot the lion, so justice is served. It was Harambe, <laughs> not Billy Bad. <laughs> Going back to it, don't care. <laughs> Sticks out. You know, just uh, just when the world was healing, Brendan, you had to, had to pick that scab. Well, you know. 
if I if I can do something to raise awareness of a of a ten year old issue. <laughs> <laughs> because it's all about the awareness. Let's not actually change anything. Let's just be aware. <laughs> uh, can we talk about We Are the World? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Paul Tucker Rex uh, lays to waste all the bullies in the scene, kills every single one of them. Yeah. Well, well, you know why? Because Weasel peed on him. <laughs> right. <laughs> One of them bees on him, thinking that he's just, oh, somebody left their T-Rex statue here. Yeah, right. Oh, this is kind of cool. Well, it's now, moving. I gotta ah! ask, I gotta ask, Weasel, was he the guy from People Under the Stairs with No Tongue? Yes. yes Thank you. Uh, character actor, Sean Whalen. He yes. has been Wait, in so much, is? yes, he's been in so much oh. stuff where he, unfortunately, I don't know his name. He's just snap, snap, snap. Oh, that guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's fantastic. <laughs> also, this is a good point to pr- probably to mention to you guys. I don't know if you all know this, but there is an R-rated cut of this movie. What? What? With more so, gore? Yeah. In this scene, yeah, there's oh. like... Oh, you know, you oh I, I awkwardly... thought it was Keith Richards giving him a handy or something. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, how it awkwardly cuts away early from every kill. Um, apparently, some, some of these are very gory. You can find it on YouTube, but uh, don't, don't watch the full movie. Well, actually do, because the whole thing is an Italian dub. Yes! <laughs> Get the, the, mo- the movie definitely has an odd uh, inability to grasp the tone that it's going for. Well, sometimes it seems like, at, at times it seems like it's geared at kids and then teenagers and then weird adults. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. And, this movie has issues. That's our, that's our demographic, all right. <laughs> kids, <laughs> teenagers, weird adults. <laughs> that's our, you know demo- that's our demographic, too. I mean, really, when you get right down to it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah it's aimed at us kids who watched uh, traumatic things far too early in life, and <laughs> so now the Jungle Book isn't going to cut it. <laughs> hey, coming next week. Coming next week. Hey. Not Jungle Book. Um, <laughs> not the Jungle Book. <laughs> <laughs> seeing movies at a wildly inappropriate age uh, like the jungle yeah. book yeah <laughs> and... wait can we do the opposite of that and and have someone on that's like uh 50 60 years old talking about how they saw like my little pony or something <laughs> they've been a brony for at least 10 years now I tell you, it gives my life such fulfillment and joy to know that Rainbow Sparkle Dash is always there for me. Uh, Get out of the recording booth, Milos. Okay, change the locks again. Uh, I don't know how Milos got in here, but anyhow. Um, So, Tammy and the T-Rex. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Paul Walker Rex, Paul Rex, whatever the hell you want to call him, T. Paul, he kills... Polosaurus Rex. Polosaurus Rex, perfect. There, he kills all the, all the bullies. Um, <laughs> but one of them, apparently, he just, like, rips her leg off. Because yeah. they say, like, there was a one-legged girl back there. And I'm like, why well, you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. You may- why it was one of the psycho bitches that totally threw him under the bus in the first place and called the called Billy bad. I thought it was justice. Oh yeah, let yeah, her like, bleed out. And again, <laughs> considering the fact that she's like going to make out with him and she really obviously is into him, I don't understand why she would go out of her way to be like, "Oh, you should come see your ex girlfriend and not me." Yeah, and what she's I, up to. I honestly. She well, first off, she's a psychopath. She's like obviously getting off on the fights because, like, the blonde one at the very first uh, fight where they're doing the uh, the dick grabbing, she's like jumping up and down and like yeah, get him, yeah. And like, so is Byron. She's a sociopath, so I think she gets off on it in a weird way because oh, yeah, she's she also the one like, it. come on, Billy, come dance with me, ignore her. <laughs> Man, chicks are weird. <laughs> right. Yeah. Check out our our stage production of Tammy and the T Rex. Come oh, to please, a movie theater. Please. To can we do this? <laughs> Only if we can reenact it with cats. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> meow, meow. Well, I guess that's it. <laughs> the cops are now investigating the situation while eating chips. Yeah. Did you interrupt yeah. their lunch break? 
They well, they don't have a coroner to eat over the dead body, so they got to have the uh, the cops do it. It's true. Because, yeah, you don't want to contaminate the crime scene or anything at all. Yeah, that's like a comedy trope or something, isn't it? Wait, is it that it was chips yeah. and not donuts? Or what, no, what's your my purpose? thing was... I think it's because I they're was... from California and they're eating chips. <laughs> the California yeah. Highway Patrol. Uh... <laughs> oh, punch. I, at first, I will say, though... I didn't really catch that they were eating chips, and I thought he was just eating pieces of his dead body. <laughs> <laughs> this movie just got so much worse. <laughs> and I was like, watching the what? Italian version again? But, but here's the thing. This movie is so bananas, and they were doing it so casually that I was just like, yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that, that, that fits the mold. We're good with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at um, some point in this movie, I just stopped questioning. <laughs> like it was quite close to the beginning, but. Well, this is your, this is you just mentioned this, uh, Kaylee. Is your favorite thing is when they're rolling up the the corpse. Oh yeah, oh, oh. rolling yes. up the corpse security guard, and just he's so flat. It's so great. She just starts rolling him up like a rug. I know, it's like dried. She like does dried. take a little bite, or like she like licks off the blood, or she something. She licks the blood off her hands, or something. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think I that's also the part where the doctor mentions he's thinking about hooking up, like, the libido function or something on the T-Rex. Yes. I'm like, that just got really fucking weird, because <laughs> who wants a T-Rex to bang a human? If well, he wants to put his own body, his own brain into look, it for immortality, look, he wants to be able look, to bang. I, I understand his nurse is, like, a former porn star or something, but still, <laughs> that's a lot to take. You right? know, it's like this movie... At some point, whoever was writing it, when they were getting notes back on the the script, they were like, "This is I don't think you can get much weirder than this." And the dude was like, "Hold my beer, hold <laughs> my beer." I got because this. Everything <laughs> just keeps amping up the weirdness in this movie, the weirdness, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> you think that's weird? Wait till they start playing charades. What? Oh my god, the dino oh. charades. Before that, this is where we find out the sheriff is like super accepting also, of his gay son, right? Mm. Yeah. yeah, and the other guys are not because they they make a yeah. One of them says, "If you drop anything, don't bend over." Yeah, which really just tells to me that they're self hating, uh, closeted. So, oh yeah, for sure, hundred yeah. percent. Well, and, and to me, he's and in their not... defense, just good advice mm-hmm. <laughs> in life, <laughs> in, life in general. Uh, uh, but the dad isn't exactly super accept- accepting of his gay son. He's more dismissive of his gay son. He's well, here, not outwardly aggressive, but he's pretty dismissive. But here's the like, thing. Oh, well, he's going to be the way he's going to be, I guess. Yes. And that, I, you know what? I think that's a better form of acceptance. Uh, because guess what, Junior? You're being treated just like every other <laughs> kid by his dad. Yeah. Exactly. Completely it's like, dismissed. <laughs> uh, six more months, he's going to graduate. He'll go to Cal Berkeley, and it's, I'll, I'll be, be able to make money yeah. every once in a while. I'll be able to make his room a den. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I think it's coming up here pretty. I think it's pretty much coming up here though with the um, with the with the dino charades though. I believe that's next. It is yes. Yeah. Well, at, well, he has to kidnap Tammy first. Right. <laughs> the dinosaur, uh, t- Polosaurus Rex, uh, shows up in Tammy's window, takes her a- a- to a, uh, a shed somewhere or a, a-, a barn. Yeah. <laughs> As she wakes up, we get uh, one of the craziest scenes in the movie, and that's saying a lot. <laughs> why is, is I got to know why is there like a full on rural barn nearby her suburban California house? Um, for the same reason, there's like a safari. Yeah. <laughs> well played. So, well so played. That I can actually answer as no a counsel. lifelong Californian. California actually is mostly farmland. Like, you never yeah. see that part. But, uh, like, even in Los Angeles and that, you don't have to go very far to start hitting farms. Oh, it's funny. I actually just had the same discussion about Montreal with my wife last night. We went to Montreal a couple of summers ago, and I was like, it's really weird because when we were going there and we were driving there, it was like farm, 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 city. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much how it is. Like, different counties have different, like, ordinances in that. And when you go from, like, a city to, like, a town, uh, the towns, at least here in California, they're trying to, like, keep them more rural. So it's, like, suburban, like, you have city center, suburban, cows. (laughs) So when you take the 405 down to the 95 and then off the Chula Vista, and I'm like, what are you doing here? 
I, I don't know about that, but like up here, if you take the 101 to the 80, and then you want to take off to the uh, the 580, you follow 580, take, uh, was it the 39 out? 39, I mean, yeah. yeah, you take 39 out towards Napa, boom, cows. This podcast has changed. And then when you meet up with the cows, they're like, what are you doing here? Oh, well, they're California cows. So they totally go, they go like, oh, totally moo. What are, totally moo. What are <laughs> moo doing here? See, what are what are Moo doing here? Because oh, they're cows. You took my joke. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was already, and then you did it. <laughs> Guys, let's stay focused and uh, <laughs> keep talking about this fantastic <laughs> movie. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Critters, we got to the emotional center of this movie with Damn the game of charades, where she it. realizes that Paul Walker is a robotic dinosaur. Okay, he let's eats go. a rose. <laughs> Um, nom, 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 nom. Because he eats the yeah, because he eats the flowers. No, but, but she doesn't realize when he eats the flowers. She's just like, oh, he's just hungry or something. Yeah, it's, like, 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 it's not until oh. like a little bit after that that she actually understands. That reminds me of someone stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many people does she know who eat roses? <laughs> She's like, oh, you seem like you have some sort of disability. Wait a second. Wait a minute. <laughs> Brandon, I didn't do a simple jack one. <laughs> Brandon, I got a. He was wearing a half shirt. Yeah, he, if they could have got a half shirt or half sweater for this dinosaur, she would have known right away. <laughs> Brandon, is this the least plausible scientific movie we've done? It has to be. And we have done two Gamera movies. Yes. Oh, wow. Did you guys meet him when you were out in Japan? Did you tell him I said hi? Oh, Gamera? Oh, yeah. yeah. Give him a high Gamera. five. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. He says hi. Oh, awesome. Awesome. I just, you know, I've, I've always wanted to meet him. But I just don't have the, you know, I, I don't have the, the money or time to go to Japan to say hi. And I just, I want him to he, know. He that. hangs out for Am I these days? I mean, you know. Yeah, we just saw him in an elevator and was like, excuse me, Mr. Camera? Ah! <laughs> nice. Yeah, I hear he's really down to earth. Really down to earth. Really good guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's hasn't been in movies the past couple of years, so he's really humble now. Well, he's really mm. focusing on his family these days. Yeah. Well, you know what? That he's at that make, and he's a good turtle like that. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> so Tammy, Tammy and the T-Rex. T-Rex. <laughs> I keep trying, guys. I keep trying. Um. <laughs> so it's time to uh, it, it. So they do the dino charades. Um. When when Denise Richards comes back uh, from that, she she finds out it's Paul Walker uh, as Paulosaurus Rex, and her dad is like, "What happened in your room? Like your room looks like it was like destroyed." And she said, "I don't know. A meteor." As if that's a normal response to yeah. anything. To go see what it was. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then I just I got a note too that I wrote down every time Byron had a different outfit. This is number four, by the way. Oh. Yeah. It's like Sean Paul splits this month. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so they go to Paul Walker's funeral. That sounds terrible, but it's this character's funeral. Oh my <laughs> that's true. Oh god, oh, this scene. <laughs> They cut to real footage. No. (laughs) (laughs) They go to his funeral and they are planning on taking his corpse out of the coffin and putting the brain in there with the help of this crazy doctor, I guess, who they'll somehow convince to do this. Um, Here's the thing. Uh, First of all, I thought the doctor still hadn't dropped off the corpse, which even if he did, Paul Walker's been dead for what, two days? Yeah. yeah, his body is rotting from the inside already. Even if not embalmed, and there would definitely be some rigor and, and necrosis. Yeah, and it doesn't even look like him. No. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's, it's, it's not him. about the rats. That's it. Oh yeah, my the god, the rats! Right but Dude, I think it was basically one of the yeah. props from Poltergeist. Right. <laughs> so. This this prompts the arrival of uh, actually you know what I do uh, that that thing that accidentally played there just for a second I do have to I do want to play this other clip here um, because we didn't mention that Paul Walker's only family in this movie is his drunk uncle. Oh, are you talking about the best funeral uh, speech ever? Best funeral yeah, speech Bobby, ever. Not Bobby Moynihan, but his drunk uncle. And uh, yeah, so he gives a little speech best here ever. at Paul Walker's funeral. Um. Yes, exactly. This is the best drunk acting I've ever heard. Here we go. When he was quite young, and it became my responsibility, my privilege to raise him. But the truth of the matter is, (laughs) it 
Everybody knows I'm just a drunk. <laughs> you can hear people in the crowd chuckling. <laughs> and, and then the pastor's like, beat it. <laughs> and, and, and the T-Rex, uh, Polosaurus Rex nods his head. Nods his head. <laughs> Cries a bit. Uh, by the way, I also want to point out Denise Richards' uh, red velvet morning dress that she's wearing to this funeral. That could be the greatest outfit in this entire movie. I didn't know if she was at a funeral or in a Cranberries video. <laughs> oh, you know what, though? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, one of the songs that would fit perfectly with this is Zombie. <laughs> yeah, Denise Richards definitely looked like Blossom at this funeral. <laughs> Tonight on a very special Tammy and the T Rex. So we all have a '90s hot take on what Denise Richards is wearing in this scene. <laughs> and now we're checking out dead dicks. Yeah, wow. yeah. Gotta gotta measure. It's we're all doing... about length. Gotta in, gotta include girth. Um, <laughs> the best the best part of this, and much like '90s movies had uh, clothing montages where they would put on clothes. Someone would shake their head until they got the perfect outfit. This is uh, mm-hmm. Denise Richards and Byron going uh, corpse shopping for yeah. mm-hmm. a new body for Paul Walker <laughs> while Paulosaurus Rex is in a truck watching and say- and just shaking his head at every possible <laughs> choice. Also, uh, it's, it's mentioned that uh, he doesn't want to be black. <laughs> yeah, it's not a race thing. He just wants to be cute. <laughs> Doesn't that make it worse? <laughs> I think so. But he doesn't want to be a girl either. No, he, well, he's thinking about it. Yeah, so it's like, eh, maybe. Well, let's put that on the maybe pile. Right? Denise, Denise Richards. No, this is this is what they fucking say in this movie. Denise Richards says, I don't want a girl. And Byron goes, neither do I. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hey, remember me? I'm the gay character. <laughs> oh, that's right. I almost. Ah, oh, never mind. <laughs> Eventually, the cops show up. Um, uh, B- uh, Terry Kaiser and uh, Nursey there are tied up, and <laughs> I'm does does she chew the rope or does she give him a blowjob? She yes. gives him a blowjob. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Blow yeah. <laughs> Which I mean, really, when you think about it as code, it's a pretty good co- chew my rope. I mean, because it just kind of hangs yeah, there like a piece of He's rope. into the rough stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, the word chew kind of throws me off. Well, again, like I said earlier, Brendan, different yeah. strokes for different folks. Hey. It takes yeah, all kinds to make rope. Yep. Um, he wants his, to put his, his, sa- his mind into a T-Rex so we can bang her. His, his yeah. safety word is Velociraptor. <laughs> Alan. <laughs> Sam Neill, is that you? <laughs> no. Um... Is this a legitimate line? Hang on to your boobs. What? There's at one point where they're where they're doing the like they're getting away. The uh, police chase. Yeah, the police yeah. chase. And I'm pretty sure that Byron says to Denise Richards, "Hang on to your boobs," and then she clutches her breasts. I think mm-hmm. you're right. Okay. Well, because that's uh because they're obviously ripping off Jurassic Park. It's a play on a uh, hold on to your butts. <laughs> oh, well. This came out. This came out the year. Oh after no, it came out after yeah, yeah. Yeah, the year after Jurassic Park. The year after Jurassic Park, they were like, let's do this. Yeah. Where do you think they got the T-Rex from? That was like... No, this is not... This, no, no, this, is, this is one of the reject ones. I'm like, well, we don't want to take it apart. It's, wait, isn't that that uh, Weekend at Bernie's guy doing a movie? Or the Mac and Me guy doing a movie? Here's, here's um, another part. We were talking about the two homophobic cops. There's this part here that's very unfortunate. Um... They almost drop a hard F. Yeah. Do you guys catch that? Because they're like, you're fat, your son. Yep, 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 yep. Yes, yeah. they did. Yeah. Why would you even say your fat? Like, why would that even be a way to describe that? Like, it's just a weird phrasing anyway. What year? You know what I mean? it's, what, it's for favorite, right? What your year? Favorite son. What year? What? 94. What? Obviously. 94. No, yeah, no. It's, it's his favorite saying, son. Sheriff I'm Black has more were, than one son. I'm not saying there weren't movies around this time that used that word casually. I'm just saying the phrasing was was weird to me. Mm-hmm. Well, because it was going to be your hard F son, but it's like, oh, no, you're uh, your son. <laughs> that's you talk to your sheriff, though. That's why he corrected himself. I guess that's why he stopped himself, yeah. It was just, it was bizarre to me. Anyway, that, that, if that would have been, if that would have been taken out, this movie would have been fine. <laughs> 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 yeah, right. Would have been Boffo at the box office. 
I have a note that says post-coital bestiality. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. So I think she fucked that T-Rex, guys. I'm just going to say it. Well, his libido function isn't hooked up yet, though. They look pretty comfy. I think she just got fingered by a T-Rex. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Which he can essentially do from across the room, apparently. <laughs> Go, go, gadget arm! (laughs) He is a a robot. I'm sure he's got plenty of vibration functions. Oh, dear. (laughs) Something definitely happened. Yeah, exactly. There was was some some, uh, grogginess afterwards. (laughs) They were napping. Well, if you got banged by a T-Rex, you'd be groggy too, my friend. (laughs) Well, you know what? If the the arm length on him is any indication... Yes, the libido function's not hooked up. Yeah, but it's still his brain. I mean, he doesn't need a libido to perform sexually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Denise, no, Denise? Sure that's exactly what you wait, need. Wait, wait, I think, I think Callie's going to go into depth about what she's talking about. <laughs> Please continue. Saying, uh, yeah, I on. mean, it is it is a robot, so I mean, if 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 go Tammy on. took certain certain steps to, uh, yeah, he probably wouldn't need a libido. He wouldn't need to want to be having sex. He would just I'm, be. I'm sorry, you must it. be cutting out. We're not getting explicit <laughs> details here. I'm sorry. I wasn't prepared for that. Oh. <laughs> now I'm just imagining like the the RoboCop sound. <laughs> I, I I shit you not. We were watching RoboCop two right before starting this. <laughs> it is on IFC. <laughs> um, Byron gets his final great costume of this movie is his bike gear. You know what? I, just before we get to that, before the during that whole chase scene, you know what? Me, a thought popped into my head so much so that I had to make a note of this. Couldn't we have just watched Monster Trucks? <laughs> no. Like the Lucas Till film Monster Trucks? Wait, that is not a good movie either. What? No. But it was written by a six-year-old. No. <laughs> Nathan, are you saying you like that movie? I enjoyed it more than this. Uh, and I it's got a very similar it. premise without all the reptile bestiality. Not enough oh, reptile bestiality. Oh, you know, you had me interested in monster trucks, but with that last part, I, I'm out. <laughs> no, I'm out, guys. Sorry. No, no one's banging animatronic robot dinosaurs and monster trucks. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned it. I'm out. Yeah, no, you're right. We need to watch uh, the Rock'em Sock'em oh. Robots movie. Oh, and you're saying that movie lost $100 million? Weird. <laughs> Despite the inclusion of MacGyver? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Um, P.S. Nathan, yes. not to spoil anything, but coming soon. I <laughs> yeah on board on board. <laughs> um, uh, so basically, so th- at this point, the cops uh, corner Byron and uh, Denise Richards in the barn with the, with uh, Polosaurus, and he says, "We need to get something white besides you." Mm-hmm. <sighs> they wave a bra in the air, right? Yeah. Um, and then, because of course, obviously Byron's not wearing underpants. Like, <laughs> that's what I got from not, the white ones. Not anyway. tidy whiteies. <laughs> if, if Have you seen? You've seen his? There. Yeah, exactly. You've seen his yeah. wardrobe. He's not going to wear something so mundane and and humdrum as tidy whiteies. Good it's lord! Free balling. <laughs> I mean, he was biking. If he's not commando, he's full on fancy silk underwear. I'm just saying. <laughs> I hope so. No. Go on, Brendan. <laughs> no, no, no that, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so there's a big standoff here, and then it turns into a Mexican standoff because uh, Terry Kaiser shows up with, ner- with his nurse, and they they basically say, oh, no, it's uh, it's fine. It's just a mechanical dinosaur. There's no brain in there. <laughs> Definitely no human brain in there. <laughs> and this, this kid totally just stole my robot dinosaur. I just need it back. Yeah. Yeah. So they go in with their giant tranquilizer gun, and um, Polosaurus eats Terry Kaiser mostly off screen. Oh, yeah. By the way, except in the Italian dub version. Robots. Right. Yeah, tranquilizing a robot. Oh, yeah. They didn't tranquilize oh, the yeah. lion, but they're going to tranquilize a robot. Yeah, you would think a they robot. would get some yeah. sort of EMP type device. Yeah. <laughs> they just need a big magnet. Yeah. Harambe. I mean, they just used a taser in RoboCop 2 to take him down, by the way, 15 minutes ago. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you watching it while we're recording? 
Oh, well, it's RoboCop three now, but no. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the Citizen Kane of RoboCop <laughs> right? movies. <laughs> yeah, it's like a RoboCop marathon. They're probably gonna do the straight to DVD stuff here. Right yeah, now. RoboCop seven. <laughs> RoboCop three was straight to video. Did that get a theatrical Robo- release? RoboCop five, Citizens on Patrol. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> With Steve Gutenberg. <laughs> Michael Winslow making all the RoboCop sounds. <laughs> Get her alive, you're coming with me. <laughs> so we've got Activate to libido mode. <laughs> we've come to the conclusion here. Um, yes, uh, Terry Kaiser has been eaten. Ner- the nurse, mm. I think, just takes oh. off, runs away. And then oh. they... Oh, I was going to say, when she's taking off and it's like in slow-mo... She, like, has to pull her shorts down. Did anybody else notice that? No, I noticed that. <laughs> oh, okay. Just wanted to make sure I wasn't the only one that dreamed it or something. I don't know. <laughs> and then they shoot the fuck out of Polosaurus Rex. But, like Kayla was just saying with the tranquilizer, it's a mechanical dinosaur. Yep. There's nothing... That, unless they're shooting it in the brain, there's nothing to kill. Well, they could kill the hydraulics. I mean, that's really sure. that's, that's as close as you're going to get. And they are the uh, the sharpshooter equivalent to stormtroopers. These guys, there's legitimately <laughs> yes. a broadside of a barn, and they're barely hitting it. <laughs> it's true. They're taking some of the paint off. Yeah, what can we say? They went to the stormtrooper school of shooting. There you go. Oh. So. Um, I would like someone to explain this final scene without, like, as straight as possible. Oh, you mean the white snake video with the brain in the jar? Yes. <laughs> I, wa- I want, I want to hear, I want to hear a, a straight retelling of this scene. Okay. <laughs> so okay. the epilogue. Here's the epilogue. T-Rex. Here's what happens. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, ta- sorry, host, go on. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Tammy's uh, parents are outside tending to their uh, lovely... Uh, well, nicely appointed uh, suburban California home, you know, garden and lawn. Uh, Tammy shows up super happy. Uh, they're a little concerned about that because, you know what? She's been through a lot. And she should really be a little more uh, affected or sad. Uh, and then she goes upstairs uh, where she is keeping her boyfriend's brain alive in the brain goo uh, with a video camera and a computer. Uh, she then proceeds to dress like Tawny Katane in a White Snake video and dance while Sparks uh, jut out of uh, Paul Walker's brain. Meanwhile, he has a, a, a vocal uh, voice box thing that's going on. Uh, he can talk now when he couldn't talk when he was a dinosaur. And that uh, we also come to find out that sparks equal brain cum. Yes. And that's when the money rolls in. Yes. <laughs> and the sequel. <laughs> and another yeah. point to, towards her parents being the worst parents ever is that he's just up there, but her dad's kind of like, oh, the, it makes me uncomfortable. I'm a little concerned <laughs> like, with this. Her boyfriend can, lives in her room and can't watch everything she does. Right. <laughs> no, her boyfriend lives in a punch bowl in her well. room. <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys this as a dad of two girls. I will mm-hmm. take a brain in a jar... Indeed. You can see everything over some horny douchebag with an, a working penis. Yeah. A brain in a punch bowl is going to knock up my daughter. Damn straight, Steve. You got see this. Is, Steve knows the story. He's 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 on board here. So here's the real question, at, you know, to the father in the group: uh, If eleven gangbangers ran, pushed open your door, and ran upstairs to go kidnap your daughter, at least you three of them would be them? dead. I would take three of them to the grave with me. How, however, throwing this out there, if you knew they were going up there to take her uh, teenage boyfriend out and throw him into a safari park, <laughs> would you be more forgiving? Here's the thing. Uh, in comparison, let's let's contrast the two boyfriends at this time. Uh, one seems to be a, a genuinely sweet guy. Uh, who actually does uh, love my daughter and has uh, at least some legitimate affection for her. The other is Dude, a c- controlling... And is on the football team and wears half shirts. And eats roses. Well, and you, we all have our quirks. It's good, it's bad. <laughs> yes, right, exactly. Um, the other is a, a controlling dickweed who, p- p- who c- commits home invasion in my house. Just like her father. So, <laughs> I'm just saying, there would be at least... A few severed carotids. I would take them. I would. I, I would probably get killed because just with the sheer numbers and youth on their side. 
but there would be a few going down with me is all I'm saying. You would take out three, but you would have the message. And right. <laughs> I, you, and that's the thing. You, you and send, I have relatives. So if they know what I'm capable of, they'll know that, you know, what my, you know, my brother or my cousins are capable of. You know, it, it, when you're in the, see, again, it's a whole income bracket thing. But when you're, uh-huh. uh, when you're middle class, uh, shooting into the uh, uh, lower end of the middle class, upper end of the working class, it's all family. <laughs> Nathan, I'm sorry to ask this. How, how old are your daughters? <laughs> uh, uh, 13 and 11. Let that be a lesson to all you 11-year-old and 13-year-old sons of bitches listening to this. That's if right. If you grow up and go after Nate's daughters, he will sever your karate. I drink cold 45 and go for the jugular, yo. <laughs> yeah, tell him, brother. You got it. Classy M effort. <laughs> Honestly, I, well, having watched this, I just finished watching the last season of Black Mirror, and this is like right out of an episode of Black Mirror. <laughs> is it uh, like the reboot I want to make, Rihanna and the Raptor? I feel like if there was any sequel to this, it would be like uh, Paul Walker's character going crazy. As uh, a, like, okay, well, uh, Paul Walker's not going to be in the sequel. So Steve, uh, yeah. his, his brother, <laughs> to your yeah, Paul Walker. to your desire of making uh, Rihanna and the Raptor, uh, that only works if um, Chris Brown plays the psychotic uh, gangbanger oh. boyfriend. Oh. That that that's heavily implied. That's a given, uh, right? Okay, I just want to be sure. Yeah. <laughs> Except for the twist is Rihanna is the robot and the raptor is who she falls in love with. <laughs> exactly. What a twist. Oh, you were my meant Lord. to be together. <laughs> Umbrella, Ella, 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 A, 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 A reboot. <laughs> On that note, we have come to the end of Tammy and the T Rex. <laughs> oh, thank um, God. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. What We're Late Thinking is brought to you by HostGator. HostGator is a leading provider of shared, reseller, VPS, and dedicated hosting solutions. Award-winning support is available 24-7, 365 days a year via phone, email, and live chat. Discover why over 9 million websites trust HostGator. Use the coupon code SCHLUCK for 25% off your first purchase. That's SCHLUCK. S C H L O C K for 25% off your first purchase. What were they thinking is brought to you today by gameitall.com. Whether it's video game news, the latest in music or movie reviews, gameitall.com is your one-stop shop for all nerdy talk. Oh man, all these wrestling news sites are terrible. What's the matter, young lad? Ah, Mother Superior, no, don't hit me. Uh, but- I mean I can't find a good wrestling news site. A good wrestling news site? What's what's so good about a good wrestling news site anyway? Well, I just need a place where I can get all the, the backstage news and rumors and scoop. All right. Don't hit me. I listen. left the orphanage a while ago. All right, listen, Billy's younger brother. I'm not going to hit you this time. Oh, thank you. But I will tell you about a great wrestling news site. Okay. It's, it's, it's not terrible like the last one, right? It's not terrible like the last one. It's called WrestlingNewsWorld.com. You can get all the latest wrestling news, spoilers, results, all the news from all over the wrestling world. That sounds great. No, yeah. it, yes, but you know what? what? It's not going to sound great if you still if you keep up with that mouth of yours. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, again, I left the orphanage a while ago. Uh, if you don't leave, I'm gonna tell my parents. I have legal precedent over 37 states. Get back here! Oh! Stop hitting me! <laughs> WrestlingNewsWorld.com. Uh, oh, so before we go any further, uh, Nathan? Yes? I believe it's time for some uh, poetry. Yes, uh, now we've come to the point of the the uh, the podcast, um, the the culturally sensitive portion of our podcast that uh, is exclusively uh, played on NPR, uh, the low haiku. Yes, okay. and uh, I, shall we shall we flip a coin? No, I I actually I will begin uh, as okay. I deferred to you to begin last week. So uh, that's that's great. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Um, so we're gonna here we go. Seven syllables to yeah. uh, kind of explain our uh, emotions, feelings from this experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, here we go. Proceed. Tammy is a flake, a walker in a half shirt. T Rex power. Yeah. 
Wait, do I need to have like some super classy like violin music going in the background? Like, you guys want to yep, do the, the, the soft clap or, or snap your fingers? That'd be fine. <laughs> please, please. Uh, okay, so here is my low haiku. Bad acting from Paul. No motive for Terry K. No reason for film. Excellent. Well done. Good Good work. Uh, gentlemen, I... I don't know if you know this. I have a submission as well. Oh, please! Oh, and, uh, what a surprise! Always excellent to have a, a guest contribute to our uh, to our show. Milk, milk, lemonade. Round the corner, fudge is made. Tammy and the T Rex. Thank you. Well, well played. Well played, good sir. Well played. <laughs> oh, but uh, you know what? We all talked about it, but uh, don't take our word for it. Don't take our word for it. You might have to. Why is that? Because there is uh, there is no tomato meter. We've got a thirty six percent audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, and there are no critic reviews for uh, Tammy. And the teenage T Rex. <laughs> there are some great audience <laughs> reviews, though. Mm. Um, this is a, this is. I want to read one I read on IMDb. Okay. Uh, this is a bit longer, but it's worth it. This guy is a little indignant about this movie, but not in the way you would think. Okay. <clears throat> I was channel surfing the other night on Direct TV, brag, and came across <laughs> this movie with the wacky title. When I read the nutty plot description, I selected it out of curiosity. I expected to watch it for maybe five minutes and then get bored and turn to something else. I ended up, however, being really surprised by how entertaining I found this film to be. I knew I had to see what other people at IMDb thought about it, and just as I expected, almost everyone hated it. I'm not surprised that most people don't get this movie. Let me explain something to everyone. Oh, God. This movie is bad, and the people who wrote it and directed it knew that they were making a bad movie. Most of the characters and things that go on in it are totally, utterly ridiculous, and the filmmakers obviously reveled in this fact to a degree of aggressive silliness. By the way, my next band name, Aggressive Silliness. Realism (laughs) and reality have little to do with this film. Basically, it's a send-up of other B-movies, and a clever one at that. What? But apparently, very few seem to have recognized it as such. (laughs) The movie's deliberate outrageousness and low-mindedness, which is apparently a word, is what makes this movie fun, and is the source of some of its funniest moments. For the first half of this film, I couldn't believe what I was watching, and couldn't believe that anyone would make a film like this. Sincerely, Stuart Raffle. <laughs> Paul Walker's ghost. <laughs> <laughs> are, there any, uh, are there any audience ones you... Uh... I'm just flipping through. Some of them are not the the best put together, but um, uh, here's one. I've seen many films in my life, uh, but none has evoked, uh, invoked, rather, such hate and spite as Tammy and the T-Rex. An unfunny and offensive mess that causes me to use these five words. Worst film of all time. <laughs> Sincerely, Byron. <laughs> um, this, is, uh, this is from someone on Rotten Tomatoes who, did not, who decided not to be named. He just went by private user. And I think you'll see why in a second. Um, this is private. <laughs> Zing. You're missing. (laughs) You're missing, it seems, the main thrust of the film. The (laughs) T-Rex is an allegory for virgin love. Tammy (laughs) Tammy is the vehicle through which young virgin audiences can relate to adolescent yearning for sex. Great film, if you ask me. Um. Hollywood has unfortunately gone downhill from here. (laughs) Downhill from here? (laughs) Well, oh. everybody has their peak. <laughs> well, I, um, I've got one here. This was this is odd. It's a three and a half star rating, but it, it starts off. This movie was okay. Paul Walker plays a student who was murdered, and his brain was put into a T Rex. That's where the name of the movie comes in. That's the end of that review. 
<laughs> That's amazing. The professor of film at California Berkeley. <laughs> yep, and see if you can get who wrote this one, Steve. This is a, okay. this is my last one here. This is the funniest movie I have ever seen. I'm channel surfing, and I come in just as the T-Rex is going to some party, and you see the table shaking as it walks. It was the funniest thing I'd ever seen. I had to come here just to see if it was a real movie. This is great. I can't wait to see what happens next. Brendan. Brendan wrote that Seth Rogen. Oh. No, that's from uh, from a Caveman Cody, the bartender. Caveman Ken. <laughs> caveman Ken. <laughs> but it's just like, I love how he's like, I was watching it on TV, and then I had to go check and see if it was a real movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wasn't I just did... a really long Colt 45 commercial. <laughs> So here's the last one. Here's the last one I got. Uh, one of the strangest, horrible films I've ever seen. It changes tone and purpose while dropping plot and meaning every step of the way. It's a wild, one of a kind disaster. <laughs> Two stars. Five stars. <laughs> but enough about the room. I also watched Tammy and the T Rex. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Tammy and the T Rex. Um, I suppose at this point we should announce before we. Uh, uh, get everyone to plug their stuff and thank you, everyone. Um, Nathan, I believe the next one is your is uh, a very special kind of episode because we're doing Valentine's Month, mm-hmm. and your uh, significant other chose the movie for us. Yes, and can we have a hint of what's to come in two weeks? Yep. Look out! It's a pickaxe. Uh. <laughs> I know. Tammy and the T Rex too. <laughs> Rollerball. Starring Paul Rocker's brother. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Well, uh, I want to thank everyone for coming by. Uh, Kaylee, thank you very much. Thanks for having having us on. And thanks, Stephen Izzy. Uh, Kaylee, do you have anything you want to, like, do you have anything to plug? No. (laughs) You have a Twitter or anything? No, I'm good. No? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to be associated with this episode at all. (laughs) Follow my Twitter at Tammy and the (laughs) T-Rex (laughs) fan. Zero, 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 one. (laughs) <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Stephen Izzy, I believe I heard through the grapevine you guys do have a podcast we do, That's it's called uh, <laughs> Everything I Learned From Movies at eilfm.podbean.com or you can follow me at Caveman Ken on Twitter <laughs> uh, or, or the other one uh, EILF Movies uh, we're on Facebook, we're actually just wrapping up uh, Jean-Claude Van January um, we have a, a very special interview coming up with the star of Kickboxer Retaliation, uh, Elaine Moussi, uh, who worked with Jean-Claude in that movie, um, and is also just a, a badass in his own right. Is this generation's Jean-Claude? Uh, yeah, pretty much. And he's Canadian! Yeah! Woo! From Ottawa, or Ottawa or Toronto? Ottawa! One of, those. <laughs> well, one of the capitals up there. And... Uh, <laughs> <sighs> Somewhere up in the Great Frozen North. And, uh, God damn join yanks. In... <laughs> and join us in February when we celebrate Black Superhero Month. Oh, boy. So you guys are watching Spawn? <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, Spawn, Steel, uh, our Black Superman. Um, the 70s black Blaxploitation one that black sounds Panther amazing. Black Panther coming in February. Yeah, yeah you can show the live Black Panther thing. Oh, uh, there'll probably be a mini episode of Black Panther, nice. but uh, we shall see. We can talk to the guys over at the Serena Theater. There we go. <laughs> see what their slow night. <laughs> <laughs> Live podcast recording in the theater. Look, let there us was. in with all this recording equipment. There's nothing untoward going on. No, we're not going to be doing video. I mean, look at us. <laughs> <laughs> look at us. We don't even have pants on. Why would we do video? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, so, yeah. Check us out. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, uh, also, Nathan, d- yeah, don't forget uh, Montrose Monkington yeah. TV on uh, YouTube. Montrose Monkington, the f- Mont- ugh, Montrose Monkington the Third Esquire and Friends on Facebook. And also at Montrose the Third, number three RD uh, on Twitter. Um, uh, some unfortunate news in his world. The, uh, recent vlog cast that was recorded has been somehow lost. So his first vlog cast is a lost episode. 
But he is uh, vowing to recover. What with the Raw Rumble coming up, uh, he's promising a, uh, a a good Rumble review from a previously really good Raw Rumble, and of course also the videos uh, for the upcoming Raw Rumble as well. And don't forget the special episode of Montrose Monkington Jr.'s Ghost. <laughs> Uh, Don't tempt me, Steve. Uh, <laughs> you, can also, you can also follow us if you want at uh, WWTT Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook or just search What Were They Thinking. And we're on all the podcatchers. Of course, if you're listening right now, you are listening to a podcatcher. But we're on YouTube, Podbean, iTunes, or Apple Music, whatever it's called. Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, and, you know, uh, what are the other ones, Nathan? Human Sent iPod. Uh, Pocket yep, Podknife, Al Jazeera Network, also the Teddy Ruxpin Appreciation Society. But we're just uh, if somehow we got a 15 minute spot on Fox News at 4:45 a.m. So you can check us out there. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> well, I mean, it happened. We need to pay the bills, okay? I don't so, know. I, I thought they didn't allow foreigners on that station. <laughs> <laughs> we, I pretended I was a huge Trump fan. <laughs> and from Kentucky, no. he, he certainly didn't say he was a dreamer. That's for sure. Uh, well, they might say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. <laughs> I thought you were just going to say, but I'm not. Oh. <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> not a dreamer. Um, but yeah, that was it. That was Tammy and the T-Rex. Uh, t- again, thank you, everyone, for sh- for coming to talk about this movie. Yeah, I really oh, appreciate you. you guys taking the time. And uh, Nathan, just to wrap up, I guess, do you have any questions i don't see how you would but do you have any questions about this movie well is it, is it not so much the movie um i mean if you take a a robot and and transfer a human brain into it is there is there actually a gel that that would actually help keep a human brain alive and if, and if so you know would that human brain then then you know kind of divorce itself from its previous moral code uh where they're a good person and just go on a, a, a random killing rampage and then you know uh, then i i guess get some sort of remorse and and eat a, eat a rose and and then you know uh you know hide in a barn and, and really i guess i i guess with all that coming into question i guess the big uh the big query here in this situation is brendan i really gotta know yeah what were they thinking hi i'm ellen and i'm scared we exist in the matrix i'm jaslyn and i'm bad at ad living <laughs> and you're listening to high, high expectations, expectations the promo for our international listeners you can appreciate our cute new zealand accents for our local listeners You might bump into us in the street three times in the same hour. Our podcast is about pop culture, sexuality, relationships, interesting hobbies, banter and ragging on each other. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Pocket Casts, Podcast Addict, or anywhere you might like to find podcasts. Yay, please subscribe. Goodbye. Hey, do you like movies? Hey, do you like podcasts? If you do, then come on down and listen to the Home Video Hustle podcast, homie. Hustle, hustle. Every Friday, we talk about whatever movie PJ picks out the bag. What does that mean? (laughs) Well, every Wednesday on our YouTube page, I pick a bunch of movies at random. Sometimes there's a theme to it, sometimes not. PJ picks the movie out, and guess what? We watch it on Friday. We talk about it for about maybe an hour, hour and a half, whatever we feel like doing. Might give you something good to watch, baby. Come on down every Friday. So come get your hustle on with Home Video Hustle. You can find the show on any podcatcher app, or you can come down to homevideohustle.popbean.com. All of them in one place for you. So you can go ahead and binge it like it's Netflix. We ain't the Defenders. Yeah. But I like to think we a little bit better than that. <laughs> come out at your boys, man. Come chill with us. Peace. Peace. I'm a motherfucking T-Rex! I'm a motherfucking T-Rex!